Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain, day 327 of the current situation. And the main debate in Spain at the moment seems to be whether or not people will be allowed to have a holiday at Easter time. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel by buying merchandise. And a big thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon for your support. And a big welcome to all of the new patrons that have joined in the last couple of weeks. Now let's get into the news. And as I said, the big news around the country at the moment seems to be whether we will be or won't be able to travel around the country for Easter. We're getting mixed messages from the government at the moment. Nothing unusual about that. One minister says something, another minister says something else. So people are a little bit confused as to whether or not they can make plans or not. As we can see here, the government and the autonomous communities have called the possibility of tourism at Easter. Minister Montero has warned that normalized mobility will be difficult for those dates. Don't make plans for Easter, despite the fact that this Monday the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Reyes Moroto, pointed out that within a couple of months it would be possible to resume national trips. Coinciding with Holy Week, the government spokesperson, Maria Jesus Montero, has cooled that possibility. There is no debate about that, she has settled. However, in another headline from today's press, we can see that Ms. Moroto has reaffirmed tourism at Easter if sanitary conditions are met. So there we go. One minister says something, another minister says something else. So what do we do? Do we start making bookings? Do we start planning holidays to the coast for Easter? Do we start planning a trip to Seville for Semana Santa? Those are the questions that a lot of people are asking themselves. But despite the mixed messages from the central government, the autonomous community government seem fairly clear on the situation. We can see here that they have urged the government to activate a direct aid plan and they feel helpless due to the lack of support for tourism and they have given up on Holy Week. And Valencia has left the celebration of the Fayas in 2021 in the air after confirming that they cannot be held in March due to the coronavirus. The mayor of the city does not refuse to celebrate the holidays in the second semester, although he specifies it will depend on the speed of vaccination of the coronavirus. The mayor of the city, Joanne Ribot, in statements to the media this Tuesday, has not closed the door to celebrate the holidays. I am not capable of making the categorical statement that in 2021 there will be no failure, as he pointed out. However, the mayor has ensured that in the event that they are finally held, the failures will scrupulously comply with health guidelines. So no running of the bulls this year in Pamplona. The failures and Valencia have been suspended, possibly to be held at the end of the year, depending on the health situation. And Holy Week celebrations in places like Seville are most likely also going to be suspended. Now we'll change the topic and move it on to the vaccination plan here in Spain. The new health minister, Ms. Darias, has been in the press recently and she's very optimistic that the vaccination plan can get back on track. We can see here that Spain will receive at least 6.7 million doses of vaccines until March. And they will come from the pharmaceutical companies Pfizer, Moderna and AstraZeneca. The first shipment of the latter will arrive in the country between February the 6th and the 8th with 1.8 million doses after the conflict with the European Union has been resolved. This is great news for everyone, said the Health Minister Carolina Darius at the press conference after the Interterritorial Council of the National Health System in which she transferred to the autonomous communities that the doses of the said vaccines will be distributed equally based on the target population. So, with the vaccination plan apparently back on track, with the news that more shipments are scheduled to arrive in coming weeks, you might be asking yourself if the news can get any better. Well, the answer is yes, because the third coronavirus wave in Spain continues to ease, with incidents only rising in four territories. Pressure on hospitals also appears to be falling, but at this rate it would still take weeks before indicators were at acceptable levels. The third wave of the coronavirus in Spain is slowly starting to retreat. The five basic indicators, new infections, the 14-day cumulative number of cases, hospital bed occupation, intensive care unit occupation and deaths were all down in the latest health ministry report which was released on Wednesday. So finally some positive news regarding the health situation here in Spain. Now let's have a look at the health data around the country by looking at a map of Spain and various autonomous communities. We'll start here with a map of the country. We can see that the risk level is extreme, the total amount of cases almost hitting the 2.9 million mark. The accumulated incidence rate in the last 14 days countrywide is 815. There have been 1,911 COVID-related deaths in the last seven days. There are currently 30,256 people hospitalised around the country with COVID. And there are 4,836 people in ICUs, which is 44% of all ICUs in the country. 
one of the country's main hotspots now, Castilla y Leon. The risk level there is also extreme. We can see the total amount of cases, the AI rate for the last 14 days, 1,240. There have been 158 COVID-related deaths in the last seven days. There are 2,321 people currently hospitalized in that autonomous community with COVID, and there are 322 people in ICUs, which is almost 54% of all ICUs in Castilla y Leon. And finally, the Valencian community, which is also another hotspot in the country. We can see the risk level is extreme. The total amount of cases, the AI rate for the last 14 days, 1,323. There have been 487 COVID-related deaths in the last seven days. There are 4,612 people currently hospitalized in the Valencian community with COVID, and there are 763 people in ICUs, which is 62% of all ICUs in the Valencian community. So some autonomous communities in Spain still under a little bit of pressure, but as we saw, the general trend seems to be improving around the country. Now, corruption here in Spain reared its ugly head again yesterday. There weren't any new cases of corruption reported. This was an old case that dates back some 10 years, and it was the famous case involving the Partido Popular Party here in Spain, and it was the biggest corruption scandal here in Spain, if I'm not mistaken, for a long, long time. As we can see here, the treasurer, Luis Barthenas, has offered to uncover the bribery of the government of Aznar. The ex-treasurer of the PP proposes to collaborate with the judge who is investigating 23 contracts of five ministries for 600 million euros. Mr. Barthenes has also reiterated that former Prime Minister Mr. Rajoy was aware of the alleged illegal activity of the Partido Popular, and he insists on referring to Mr. Rajoy as the perfect connoisseur. So there we go, the political corruption scandal that rocked the country some years ago, still making headlines today, and Mr. Barthenes calling the former Prime Minister Mr. Rajoy the perfect connoisseur. So we'll keep an eye on this case and see if any more former politicians end up in prison. But the former treasurer's willingness to collaborate with the judge is bad news for the current members of the PP party. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Philip. I've been to hospital a few times during this pandemic, again next Tuesday, and it's easy to get the impression they are empty because as an outpatient they are. But you don't have any contact with the COVID parts of the hospital and all the staff and patients dealing with the disease use designated entrances which are separate from the rest of the hospital. So it's equally true that the places are full to bursting and semi-deserted. Yeah, Philip, thanks for the comment and thanks for shedding some light on the current situation of hospitals. We saw the other day that there are various clowns going around filming hospitals, trying to tell people that they are empty and that this whole COVID thing is nothing more than a hoax. We heard the story the other day about a person that went into a hospital in the province of Burgos, filmed the empty corridors and tried to convince people that there was nothing happening there. And apparently this type of activity is happening in other countries around the world, for example, England, and a woman was recently arrested and fined for doing something similar. I don't think you have to be a genius to realize that COVID patients would be separated from other patients in a hospital, people that are suffering other problems. And of course, if you're going to a hospital as an outpatient, you wouldn't have any contact with COVID wards. But obviously what makes sense to some doesn't make sense to all. One here from ADF 1955, once people are allowed to travel, they will find the money to do it. I'm not sure there will be enough planes to carry them all. Yeah, dear, thanks for the comment, obviously referring to all of that pent-up demand for travel at the moment. Lots of people eager to hop on a plane and come to countries like Spain, as I mentioned yesterday, to spend their money and get a little bit of sun on their bodies. A lot of people are predicting that things are going to go crazy once people are allowed to travel again. And hopefully all of these businesses that are related to tourism in countries like Spain can hold on and wait for the masses, get the money that they need from the government and hopefully not have to shut up shop. One here from Eclectic Tronic, the PP are desperate to kick up a fuss about the report because today their ex-treasurer Barthenas has threatened to lift the lid on the slush fund and trails of corruption that went right to the highest level of the party. Those of us who have been here any length of time can see it's a technique they've used before. The Eclectic, thanks for the comment, and you're right, it is a technique that they have used on various occasions over the last 10 years or so. It was quite common during Mr. Rajoy's time to use this technique, but it's not unique to Spain. This is a technique that is used by various political parties around the world. Whenever there is a scandal like corruption haunting them, they put up a smokescreen and try to divert attention away from the problem. And the big problem with this particular corruption case is something that you mentioned in your comment there, that it went to the highest levels of that political party. And that, for me, is a huge problem. One here from Mark. Seems like New Zealand is the only country in the world to have managed the situation fairly well. Suppose geography helped too. 
Yeah, Mark, thanks for the comment. You're right, New Zealand has done very, very well. We mentioned this yesterday. Australia has done reasonably well also, and also some countries in Asia have managed to keep the health situation under control. I think there's various factors as to why those countries have been able to do better than countries in Europe or North America, but geography has definitely played a major role, especially when it comes to New Zealand, and anybody who has ever traveled to New Zealand will know exactly what I'm talking about. One here from Pat. Hello, Stuart. I have a somewhat related question for you and the general audience, especially prescient for those considering becoming auxiliares de conversación. My wife has been there since September in the program and her payments seem to be haphazard at best. Here it is into February and still no pay since the end of December. When her pay was on time for that payment, we believe they had finally gotten it resolved, but here we are again. She is expected to show up to her school every day on time, but the Spanish government doesn't regard her enough to at least pay her in a timely manner. Yeah, Pat, thanks for the comment, and sorry to cut it a little bit short, but I think we got the general gist of what you were trying to say. I don't know exactly what the situation is regarding payment to Auxiliares de Conversación, but I do know that there are a few people out there watching these videos that do belong to the same program. So if you could, let us know in the comment section below what the situation is regarding your payment and whether or not you do get paid regularly on a monthly basis, or if you're like Pat's wife, having trouble getting the money in the bank. I haven't heard about any problems getting paid from people that I know that have done the program, so I'm curious to see whether it's a widespread problem or a one-off. So please let us know in the comments section below, and let's see if we can help Pat out. One here from Andro Meta. I enjoy your videos, but I regret reading your comment section. I can't believe how many people there are who just refuse to listen to scientists and experts on infectious disease. It's actually terrifying. Yeah, thanks for the comment and sorry to see that you regret having read the comment section. I've also read a few comments from other people saying something similar, that there are too many comments from nutters and conspiracy theorists that prefer not to listen to the experts but believe rubbish that they read on social media. I don't know how many times I've read over the last year or so people telling me to open my eyes, not to believe what I read in mainstream media, and that I need to inform myself better about the current health situation. Don't listen to scientists, don't listen to doctors, there are plenty of gurus out there that know more than them. But it is what it is and the only option is to turn off the comment section, but that's something that I don't want to do. I try to weed out comments from people that have no idea and try to push their crazy theories onto other people, but it's not easy and people keep coming back again and again and again, but I'll keep trying. And finally, one here from Tom. Welcome to the Independent People's Republic of Madrid. Remember, whatever the government of Spain suggests must be bad, so we do the opposite. Yeah, Tom, thanks for the comment. It does seem to be that way, that we're living in an independent People's Republic of Madrid at the moment. The Premier of Madrid, Ms. Díaz Ayuso, likes to do the opposite of whatever the central government does. She is one of the main opposition parties in the country at the moment, because obviously the Partido Popular takes advantage of their regional power to pose some type of opposition and get their voice out there. But this is the way Spain works, and this is the way this type of system works, and it's fairly similar in other countries that have a similar system, like, for example, in Australia. Australia, where you can see a lot of arguments and disobedience at a state level, especially if the state level politics are different to what's happening federally. But anyway, that's how it works. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.